Some refer to her as the black and white magician, although she prefers the term ordinary magician, and others may call her the master sparking machine. I will call her Marissa. Hello, Magic here and welcome to a new series of mine, The Character Profile. In this series, we'll be doing an extensive look at the cast of the series, from their personalities, powers and abilities, friendships with others, and even fan on stuff associated with the characters. As you can tell from the intro, we'll be working with Marissa Kirasame for the first episode. This will be broken into four parts. Part one will be the introduction. Here we'll be talking about the general stuff about the characters. In order, it'll be the name and their meaning, the overall look of the characters and any changes they undergo throughout the years, the time they've shown up in both games and official print work, their personalities, occupations, and or jobs, the titles the characters may be associated with like Ordinary Magician, any important possessions if they have any, abilities and powers they may have, and not but least their music. I'll explain the focus for the other three episodes once you watch it. So without taking more time, let's begin the character profile, Marissa Kirisami, part one. Name and meaning. Her full name is Marissa Kirisami, the Japanese text slash kanji or whatever the bloody hell it's called will be placed on top of the English name. Her surname, Kirisami, uh, literally means uh, Miss Rain, which also means drizzle in Japanese. The uh, kanji used in her given name, Ma, is highly likely to come from the Ma and Maho, which is magic. That sounds right, considering the animes I've watched that has used that word. Re, able to be interpreted as logic, law, or theory, which is this word I'll be posting up. It can be said that they deliver the idea of being a magician slash witch. I don't know shit about kanji, so I'll take its word for it. In addition to kanji, saw, uh, meaning small sand, doesn't have an actual meaning, but it's often used in Japanese given names to get the sound slash look of girlishness. Right, we'll go with that. Marissa is also a female given name with origins in the Romance language, which is a variant of Latin, Maris, meaning of the sea. Which is kind of funny since there's no C in Ginsokyo, but anyway, it may also mean manly. If her name was based on this, then it's very likely to indicate Marissa's characters being a mix of both Eastern and Western cultures. Store of Eastern Wonderland had her name written as what you're seeing right now, uh, with the kanji meaning pair. Yeah, the middle kanji is off compared to the one I listed in the beginning. But the game's attached text files and bad ending had it written as this. The first one I showed. Since then, her name is still written as what's currently right now. So the previous one was likely a typo. Overall appearance. In the PC 98 times, she was shown red eyes and red hair in Story of Eastern, wearing a purple witch's outfit with a white bow on her hat. Her appearance really changes with the next game, Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream, where she has yellow eyes and blonde hair, similar to her Windows Canada now. This appearance stays with her for the rest of the series, and in Dim Dream, she has black devil-like wings if fought against her. In Mystic Square, her outfit changes from purple to black, which also stays with her for the rest of the series and her hat gains faint pink frills. Her clothing also changes somewhat, and her present black and white clothing scheme was achieved in the space between the PC-98 and Windows era when she participated in Seiho Project's first work, Shuso Gyoko. She showed up with white wings. In Neo Steve onwards, she wears a pink apron on top of her clothes. In PCB, she gains a faint pink shirt under her black clothing, Mercer's appearance changes slightly with each release, such as a change in her hat's bow color, a change in her ribbon's color tied to her braid, or a change in her hairstyle. In most of the game, she carries a broom with her. As of Legacy of Lunatic, it looks like her clothing has a more dark bluish look to them. She still has the pink apron, a white ribbon on top of her hat, and a crescent moon on the chest. And it seems that her hair is much shorter here, a little just past the shoulders, but we can't see her back so it's hard to say if that's her full hair length or not. In terms of her height, it's been described of a girl in her early teens and is in the fairly short group, or at least described by Zune. Appearance in the series. Now that we're done with her physical look, let's talk about all the places she's been in. In fact, she's been in all the official games except for the first one, highly responsive to prayers. After that, she's been everywhere. The somewhat exception to this was in Shoot the Bullet, where she didn't show up in any of the gameplay, but she didn't appear in the after story of the game with Reimu. Depending on how you look at it, she could or could not have been in the game. 
Going for yeah, just because it'll make my life a lot easier. Now in terms of the print work, she's been in all of them. From the first print work that is Curiosity to the latest one which should be Forbidden Squirrely. And I'm pretty damn sure she's gonna show up in Visionary as well. If she doesn't, I'll be bloody damned. Hell, the Grimoire of Marissa is a print just about Marissa cataloging all the spell cards of the girl she had fought till that point, which should have been too subterranean. Personality. Now Marissa is very straightforward, like her master spark, and is informal with everyone. She can be condescending, as if trying to make a fool of others, and often has difficulty expressing sympathy. She can no doubt be a jerk at times. Her motivation in solving the incidents vary from wanting to loot the mansion she visits to being bribed to solve the incident to just having nothing else to do at the time, which sounds about right. She's not a complete jerk though, as shown in UFO as Marissa raises a fair point of humans being unprotected from yokai to be yokarin. Marissa is also a habitual liar. I mean, it's at the point where she lied to Iki Shiki, the person who's gonna judge her ass when she's dead, and even told Marissa that she'd lose her tongue if she kept it up. The best part was that she wasn't even phased by this, but she doesn't make any efforts to deceive people as her lies are bloody obvious. However, she's shown to have intelligence. I play you hope so when you're a magician and all that. Her personality appears to be somewhat charming due to her friends she has and her ability to walk into a Scarlet Devil Mansion so easily. This is actually how she performs her infamous book thefts from the SDM. She goes there acting like she's doing a friendly visit and most of the residents let it slide or actually hide it from Patchley. Damn, Marissa's definitely a smooth criminal, that's for sure. She has a mania for collecting things and may have a hoarding disorder. Now this next fact could coincide with the last bit, but her house is stupidly messy that Alice comments that it'd be easier to clean Iente than her house. Yeah, that doesn't sound bloody good at all when Alice rather clean Iente than your house. Unlike most characters, Marissa is known to speak in a distinct speech tone. The most typical and known example of this is in the use of the sentence ending particle Z. For those who've read some Dojin works and seen this from Marissa and said, what the fuck does this mean? I might be able to answer this for you. Z used at the end of verb stems delivers a mannish or impolite sound to the listener slash reader. Z is mostly used in a context to express one's will to act, similar to let's in English. And using it in other cases sounds somewhat natural, perhaps phony or showy. While she does speak in a rather manly tone, she doesn't speak in a rough and masculine language, but in an impolite slash casual and boyish one. So don't expect Marissa's tone to be something you might see in something like action. In the PC-98, Marissa's way of speaking including dazi to the end of sentences and ka to the end of questions as well as using watashi translated to I. Watashi is frequently considered to be masculine. However, in Story of Easter Wonderland, she used ata, again another form of I and the expression kia which are feminine. And other than the fourth stage in Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream and Lotus Land Story, her use of I had become watashi, but she laughed with <laughs> which is feminine. Furthermore, in Mr. Square, she didn't laugh, and other than femininity, I hope I said that right, he had become pretty much the same as she is now. Also, although in EOSD and PCB there are a few traces of PC-98 references, she didn't say Dezuwa in the PC-98 can as she does today. Shit. I ain't gonna lie, trying to understand this part was rather confusing. This whole kanji thing is starting to kill me in the inside. In the endings of the later PC-98 games, her speaking style was pretty much the same as she is now today. And in an earlier game of Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream, Chiyuri Kita Shirakawa had a speaking style resembling Marissa in Windows Cannon. This could have been one source of influence, although at first in Shuso Gyoko, she spoke femininely, but immediately she be then began to use a speaking style that's the same as she uses now. Occupation slash jobs. It isn't directly stated how Marissa makes a living. She does state in Strange and Bright Nature Deity Chapter 9 that she regularly goes to the Hawker restaurant to take away Raimi's yokai extermination jobs, and Perfect Memento's strict sense implies it as well, making it a likely source of income. Depending on how Raimi looks at it, it could be cool to let Marissa deal with those yokai so she can relax, or it could be a pain because she's losing out on money. As I mentioned before, The Grimmer of Marissa is a book she made that reviewed tons of spell by different owners of a spell. She's shown to a desire to try and sell the book. Now who in Gensokyo would want to buy that is a very good question. I wish her luck if she does. Marissa runs a shop for anything as an attachment to her house. Lazy but it's cost efficient and it gets the job done. 
Although it's her primary occupation, she's usually absent, probably due to those yokai extermination jobs she's been stealing from Reimu, or some random incident. Inside the shop, it's so unimaginably disordered that it becomes a mini force of magic. Again, not good. Okay, to be honest, I ain't no magician, so it's possible that could help, but still, at least try to clean up? Her friend Memento provides some information on the shop, though Marissa is surprisingly honest with her services, refusing to take payment for a failed job. Kudos to you! The shop sees little use due to its difficult to find location in the Forest of Magic and the ambiguity of what her services actually are. I doubt she's trying at this point. The three fairies of lights were her first customers to her shop, but Perfect Memento's strict sense implies she's had other customers since then, albeit not many. The fact that other people came to her for services other than yokai extermination is shocking than anything else. This next one, if you want to count it as a job, is burglary. According to Perfect Memento, Marissa boldly breaks in from the front and openly says her motto, I'll borrow the Z, while carrying things off. She mostly steals books, so she might not be the kind who steals money. Her ability to learn other people's move might originate from her nature as a thief. When in doubt, steal other people's spell cards. As opposed to how she was commented to be a prowler in Bohemian, Marissa said, My life is way shorter than yours anyway, so can't she just take back everything after I kick the bucket? I'm just borrowing until then. It should be good for the stuff I'm taking that way too. While it's true that you'll die before the yokais, it's still bloody polite to ask rather than your form of borrowing. Aya's response was the contents of the excrypts were very human-like and childish. In Subterranean, Marissa mentions being a thief concerning the book she stole from Patchley. In the extra stage of the game, Koishi pointed out, Are you the doll using thief? Afterwards, when there was nobody at the Moria Shrine, she crept in but was discovered by Kanako and the others and was punished. Really, Marissa? It's one thing to do your shit at the SDM, but it's another to try that against the home of gods. Not the smartest cookie at the time, that's for sure. Titles. Now being in a bunch of games and print work, she's bound to have some titles. Let me go through her titles in PC98 times. So we have a being made of magic and red dreams, magician sorceress, and magician of red dreams. This time we'll look at the Windows canon. We have oriental western magician, a strange magician, ordinary black magician, ordinary black magic girl, magician, magician of the drizzle, boldly timid human, the magician passing by, greedy magician, Extremely Ordinary Magician, The Human Representative Magician, Humanly Magician, Horror Magician of the School, and lastly, her most used title, Ordinary Magician. Yeah, that's a lot of titles for one person, but when you're in a bunch of games slash print work, it's bound to happen. Possessions. This next section, we'll be talking about any special items or such the girls carries throughout the series. Luckily, this is Marissa, so she has a few. One of her signature items is her magic broom. The magic broom is a bamboo broom that Marissa uses to fly. It's an ordinary broom, but constant exposure to the magic has caused a curious growth to begin. Although the bamboo is dead, leaves appear to be sprouted from the handle, independently from Marissa's magic. Damn, that's some funky shit right there. Although in the shooting game, it was only something to ride on, in the fighting games, it has become a weapon for striking and a gun barrel for which to shoot Demaku from, thus serving various purposes. A broom that can be used to beat humans and yokai alike. Definitely a keeper. The broom in her magician-like clothing is typical for an actual magician. Another iconic item has to be her mini Hakuro. The mini Hakuro, Marissa's treasured item, is a furnace that uses to power her signature move, Master Spark. From the flame of a table top stove to that of a flamethrower, to a powerful unmatched wide magic cannon, the mini Hakuro has a convenient ranges of use. Marissa herself said, I can't think of making a living without it. It was given to Marissa Berinowski as a farewell gift when Marissa left her family to live in the forest of magic, even though it would be risky for a girl of her age to handle. Fuck! That's one hell of a parting gift, considering the type of damage she's able to do with it. A magic lecture related to the item was written as follows. While shooting, concentrate your mind. Gently muttering the spell to the mini Hakuro. Aiming at someone you don't like. A magic cannon of love will be unleashed. While it might work for you, Marissa, it won't work for me. As much as I love to mass spark people. Again, I don't have the mini Hakuro, but still. If I can launch a Kamehameha way when I was a kid, then the master spark is out of my league. The last in this list will be her mushroom items. Marissa carries concealed in her skirt a dangerous finished product of mushrooms made from mushroom magic. 
after throwing the items, it explodes. So good chances are those containers you see Marissa throwing during the fighting games are those mushroom items. The fact that she seals them in her skirt seemed dangerous even to Akua, as noted in Perfume Memento. She survived this long? I guess hiding those explosive mushrooms under her skirt is low risk at this point. I think anyway. Abilities and Powers Being in many of the games, she ought to have some powers. Luckily, I will be detailing them here. Obviously, being a magician, Marissa is able to use magic. She has trained herself in magic that specializes in light and heat. She's an eastern magician who takes a western approach to magic, the opposite of Patchley. Though she's unable to use magic other than the four destroying, the destructive power alone is tremendous. It has few weaknesses, being equally effective against human and yokai. I mean, the master spark has proven its effectiveness against both, no lies there. When she uses the spell card system, she makes a display of flashing magic while it's exterminating yokai without grit. Her magic makes for a good show for Damaku, but this is made possible only through a strenuous, honest effort in creating layered effects. Shows that she's putting a lot of work into it. The majority of her spells rely on power or finesse and are themed after stars and other astronomical phenomena. Marissa picks and collects various exotic mushrooms that live in the forest of magic. She boils them, rushes them, dries them, and furthermore mixes them, making strange chemicals or medicine. By heating them, submerging them into water, or by throwing things indirectly through trial and error, she finds a pattern from which magic-like materials come forth. Success or failure, she records the details of each experiment. Sounds like a lot of work, but when you're a magician, especially a human one, it's something you're probably going to have to deal with. In her house, there are tons of various handmade grimoires. She isn't seen as a hardworking individual by others. But it seemed that this hard work in performing these magical experiments is something done honestly and hidden. But since the aforementioned was recorded in Perfect Memento, people around her may have found out about it. According to Perfect Memento, it's strange for a human to have mastery of magic of this level. Not surprised since there are only 5 humans that really have powers or sorts that I can think of. I mean we have Kozuzu and Aku that do have powers slash abilities but they aren't exactly made for combat. Also, Marissa is able to wield other kinds of magic other than light and heat magic. Her best spiritual affinity being with water. In Imperishable Night, the magic to stop the night might be Marissa's. She worked out magic for the sake of organizing a disheveled room but ended up making it even more disorganized and she hasn't had any success in it so far. In Mountain of Faith, Curled Infernal, an elemental magic, was introduced. She also uses magic to summon hot spring veins as well as magic to change people's clothes in an instant with one example coming from Reimu. Those last two sound really convenient, especially the clothes. In the PC-98, she used star magic as she does today. In Shuso Gyoko, she fought using Ori's and was able to duplicate herself. Shuso Gyoko is another shoot em up game. While it was made by a different team, Zune did help with some of the artwork and lend Marissa and Reimu into the game, wearing their Windows outfit two years before EOSD. Another important power is her ability to fly. Marissa is almost always depicted as riding on a broom when she flies in the sky. In the fighting spinoff, she rides a broom only during assault skills like Witch Way Line and Stardust Riviere, while for all other occasions such as her intro sequence and her mid-air dash and flight, she flies without a broom. Although in Hopeless, the gameplay has everyone fly, so she's riding on a broom at that point. Although the graphics in those games were drawn by Twilight Frontier, not by Soon, so it doesn't confirm that Marissa is able to fly without a broom. Perfect Memento states that she uses the magic broom to ride around because she believes it's an essential tool for magician. The speed at which she rides a broom to fly is potentially the fastest for a human, this fact being echoed in the games. Although Zune has mentioned that Aya is the fastest in Gensokyo, it has never been confirmed that Aya is actually faster than Marissa, as the two never contested with each other in terms of speed. In Fairy Wars, her broom is nowhere in sight. It's possible that Makoto Hirosaka may simply chose not to draw the broom into, into the sprite or has forgot about it. She was, however, seen with one in her article with Chirino in Symposium of Post Mysticism about this fight. Now, most of the facts have stated it were based if Marissa can fly or not, but I recently learned from Word of God is that yes, she doesn't need her broom to fly, it's there for looks. Which makes sense, since relying on the broom to fly would be suicidal. One of her other great strengths is learning other people's moves. Marissa Love Sign Non Directional Laser was copied from Patchley Knowledge's regular attack from EOSD, as confirmed by Zoo. Other than that, there are also others suggested to have been stolen. The Love Sign Mass Spark that resemble Yuka Kazami's and Gengetsu's laser from Lotus Land Story, her Ori's sons that resemble Nima's, and the Code Inferno that resembles Romelia Scarlet's familiar. 
in Imperishable Night. However, there's no official evidence that these are also copy moons. I know Zoon hasn't confirmed it, but bloody hell, do they look so familiar. It's unknown if Marissa is inherently talented at imitating other people's moves or she simply managed to do so due to sheer effort. She uses her mini Hawker to use the Master Spark, while Yuka uses her version of the laser through other means. Thus, her copying of the Master Spark seems more analogous to a person copying a fire-breathing dragon by using a flamethrower rather than a person copying a fire-breathing dragon by breathing flames merely through observation. It does make things easier, better to copy from a using a flamethrower than to actually breathe Fire. Marissa also states that she can't imitate Kaguya spell cards as they use special items that she doesn't possess. In that case, it's similar to a person being unable to copy Fire Breathing Dragon since there was no device on hand. It's unlikely her implied tendency to copy other moves is abnormal as magicians such as Marissa built upon the work of others. Marissa claims in the grimoire of Marissa that it's magicians who build on observation, while Patrick uses the pride of magicians to add their own original touch to another work while preserving and respecting the original. Magicians seek the truth according to Patchley. They act like researchers in this sense, building upon the work of others, which does sound like how scientists work by building upon old research, and even Patchley considered that science and magic were the same thing on how they operated. However, other magicians such as Patchley and Alice haven't been depicted using imitation as blatant as Marissa for spell cards. Ain't no one that does stealing as well as Marissa. Music. In this last section, we'll be listening to all the original music for the character. I'll play the music for about 15 seconds each and throw annotations so you can skip the current song if you listen to them already. Again, the songs played will be the original and no remixes, although I'll throw some words or annotations for you guys to see if any of these songs had remixes in other games. To note, Marissa has 7 songs. In order, there will be Love Colored Magic, Dim Dream Vessel of Stars, Casket of Star Dance of Witches slash the Witch's Ball Love Colored Master Spark Oriental Dark Flight and Magnus Knight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the first part. Make sure you click on the video right now and it should send you to the second video, which should be gameplay, which hopefully you guys will enjoy as well. 